and welcome to Madness in the Method, the Nicolas Cage podcast, where we we take a deep dive into the uh, the career of one of our most, uh, pr- probably one of our most well known actors, uh, at least living today, I would say. Um, uh, my name is Tobias, and with me is my friend and trusty co-host Christopher. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. I did it again. Uh, you, you mentioned last time that I always say hello again after you say it. <laughs> yeah. So now, now I'm aware of it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yes, this is the the the, the Nicholas Cage podcast. Um, and if you if you if you if you if you're watching this or listening to this on YouTube, don't forget we we also exist. Uh, well, at least at this point, we will exist on all major uh, podcast platforms. We didn't do before. Um, so if you want, if you, if you enjoy this show and you want to hear, uh, episodes in advance, please check us out on Patreon. It's, uh, patreon.com slash don't make a scene. There are links down below wherever you're watching or listening to this, uh, where you can listen to episodes, uh, at least a few weeks in advance and also support us uh, in making the show. You'll also get some exclusive episodes from another, uh, other podcasts that I'm involved in and, um, some Early, early sneak peeks at videos that I'm working on. But either way, um, thank you so much for listening. And in today's episode, we are talking about probably one of the more higher rated movies that Nicolas Cage has been involved in. Maybe not the most popular, but definitely like if you look at Rotten Tomatoes or, or, or Metacritic, it's, it's, it's up there. Among the the highest rated, which is interesting, and, and I'm interested to hear what you think about it, mm. uh, Christopher. It, it also, we're talking about yeah. oh yeah, <laughs> we're talking about Moonstruck. Yeah, I was just gonna say, and it also it it won three Oscars, so yeah, 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 yeah. Um, which was was uh, best uh, performance for leading leading f- female role and supporting female role for Chair and Olympia Dukakis, and then. Best writing was it writing right? Yes, John Patrick Shanley. We're gonna talk about that as well. But it's nominated for best movie and something else as well, I think. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I think so. It was um, it, it was it, it, quite quite the movie. When I <laughs> I never I I never seen it before. I knew about it. I knew of it. Um, it was one of those movies that was on TV a lot when I was when we were kids. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it's, it's, it's like a romantic comedy, I suppose. Um, so it wasn't really my thing when I was, when I was a child. So I hadn't, I, this is my, this was, this was my first time watching it. So what was your uh, opinion before you watched it? What do you, what do you, what do you think it was before? So to um, I'm not really sure what I thought of it before. I mean, I, I hadn't even seen a trailer since I was a kid, probably. Um, I, I I thought it was gonna be something like I don't know like uh, Sleepless in Seattle or something just just a regular romantic comedy basically, um, so I I I had no uh, no expectations going into it at all, actually. Well, I was I was I was a little little bit excited since it got so many good reviews. So I was like maybe this maybe this will be pretty good, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that, no 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 expectations. What about you? Uh, yeah, so I, for some reason, I don't really know where I got that idea, but I, I always thought this was not a comedy. It was just a drama, romantic drama, with mm-hmm. no comedy at all. I do. I, I think it's just because it won Oscars, and I can. I have sure, a hard yeah. time to believe a, a comedy could win Oscar. So that's true. <laughs> Com- comedies very seldomly do win Oscars. Yeah. So I, I was, uh, I was, yeah. As you said, it was, I knew the good. Uh, reviews and I knew people liked this movie, so I was going into it thinking, yeah, it's, it's going to be a a good down to earth drama movie. Um, mm. And uh, I mean, yeah, it sort of was. <laughs> okay, yeah. So yeah. So what what do you what do you think of it? <laughs> uh, I I mean, I liked it. It was, a, it was a good movie. It wasn't amazing in any way. Um, I think it was good. It has some dips in the middle. Uh, I think mm-hmm. it started out very strong. Oh, yes. uh, somewhere in the middle, it got a little confusing, and I was, 
I was I kept asking myself, why are we watch? Why are we seeing these things? Why are we <laughs> Why are we watching these these parts of the movie? These side plots that isn't really even side plots. Uh, and then at the end, they they sort of uh, gathered all the threads and uh, fixed it. <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. uh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So at, sure. the end, at the end, when the credits rolled, then you then it all made sense. I'd say. Yeah. Uh, so so yeah, it was a it was a good movie. Um, that's <laughs> my review of it. No, but yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you think? Yeah. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um... Uh, I, I I thought it was I thought it was great throughout. Yeah, maybe a little dip in the middle, but it's only a, an hour forty, so it's not like, uh, and it's, it's not like it drags on in the middle. No, um, no, no. It was, for me, it was like, mostly some specific scenes where I was like, "Why are we? What, what does this have to do with anything?" Uh, okay, yeah, oh, sure, sure. sure. So. Um, and uh, yeah, I I I think it's uh, it's it's uh, it's very strong. It's I mean it's it's uh, I'll say it's a ten out of ten. Basically, up until uh, uh, this is gonna sound wrong, I suppose Nicolas Cage comes into the movie. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> not, not, not that he like drags it down or anything, but it, it's it's around where he when he shows up and and complications arrive. Um, that the movie's great up until then, and then it starts. It's a little, it's a little weaker after that. Yeah, I but would, then it ties up really strong with uh, with all all the scenes in the kitchen because a lot of the movie. Ends up, or it's there's this long, long scene in the end in a, in a kitchen, which I really like. Yeah, I don't know how much I want to spoil about it. I mean, we'll, we will spoil some. It's over th- thirty years old. Yeah, at this point, yeah, so. I would agree that the, the, it, it takes a, a dip when Nicolas Cage, uh, Nicolas Cage's character is introduced, but it's mostly because up until that point, it's we have so much potential of of good characters and good ways the movie can go. And, yeah, and when when his character is introduced, then it's sort of uh, it, it, then we realize where it's supposed to go, and and I, I think you you think it's gonna be great because it's so much. There's so much potential up until that yeah. point. Well, I, maybe I should I should rephrase. There are still like the scenes. His early scenes are still part of what I think is a ten out of ten. It's it's uh it's what it's after it's okay. Let's just when it's when chair. Are we gonna and, go over to spoiler territory right now? Is yeah, that, is I, I suppose so because. Because it sounds like Nicolas Cage ruins the movie. That's yeah, not the, no, that's not the point. Not. So that, let's quickly go through the plot because there's not really that much of a plot. Uh, no. You have you have Cher who plays. Um, damn it! I had it in front of me. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Loretta. Loretta, um, who is uh, she's a she's a bookkeeper for I, I, I guess friends and family, um, and uh, she's a she's about to get married to Johnny, right? Yeah. Played by Danny Aiello. 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 I don't know how to say his name. Mm. Uh, <laughs> um, but he, so he asks for her hand in marriage, only to like uh, an hour later uh, say that, oh, I have, to, I have to leave for for Italy. My mom's dying. I mean, they were meeting up for that, so, but it was, a, it was a weird time to ask for 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 someone to marry you, and then just gotta go. Bye. Yeah, but that was. Yeah, well, we can get into that later. Yeah, sure. Uh, that was the point. But anyway, um, so he has he has one request while he's gone. That is that she talks to his um, estranged brother, um, so that he will and ask if he can uh, uh, appear at the wedding, be at the wedding, basically. Um, and that character is John, uh, also Johnny Depp. Um, what's his name? Nicholas Cage. Nicholas Cage. Cage. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> hmm. Yes. So she she goes to talk to Nicholas Cage and. Uh, basically, it's it's l- well, not really, but it's basically love at first sight. They fall madly in love with each other, and then over the course of like two days or something, um, while they're waiting for Johnny to come back, um, they try to figure out what to do with uh, with this uh, with this with the love of theirs. Um, all all the while, um, Loretta's parents are having um, uh, marital problems as well. That's basically the story. Uh, yeah, uh, more or less. <laughs> there are a yeah. lot of small details, but that's the. That's, oh sure, yeah, that's sure, just yeah. That's yeah, that's the main of it. I mean, here it says on IMDb, it's just Loretta Casarini, a bookkeeper from Brooklyn, New York, finds herself in a difficult situation when she falls for the brother of the man she's agreed to marry. Yeah, that's about it. 
And then there are, yeah, there is a lot of other like B plots and C plots. Yeah, because I think the the main story isn't really that interesting, really. Uh, it's, it's kind of a I don't know. It, it, all the details and the subplots and the side stories, mm. the way they entangle with the the main story, that's what makes it interesting. Yeah, because the main story may, basically consists of they meet at his job at the bakery where he works. Um, they uh, uh, they have one night of passion. They go to the opera the night after that, and to dinner after the opera, and the morning after that, they talk to Johnny about what has happened. That's their. That's literally what happens yeah. in their plot. Yeah. Or the 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 step by step like uh, plot. Yeah. So yeah, not a lot actually happens, but there's a lot of dialogue, a lot of emotions, and a lot of like uh, characters getting involved uh, surrounding that plot, and that's what makes it interesting, I think. Yeah. Uh, and um, I think one of the one of the, uh, and obviously because she won an Oscar, but one of the strongest parts of the movie is uh, Loretta's the the, the uh, character and the yeah chair yeah, is. Chair. Uh, as the actor, because Ch- Ch- yeah. she, it's an she's in- great. Yeah, I and mean, it's a very interesting um, character because we don't usually see that. This very no, yeah, she's pro- not the typical yeah. like uh, very pragmatic uh, woman who s- sort of she gets swept away by her feelings, but then as soon as she can, she puts the feelings aside and look at the logical, the pragmatic way of looking at things. Uh, yeah, and and that's interesting to see. She 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 kind of what's, what's interesting is because um, she reminds uh, she she reminds you very much of her mother who was also in the movie Olympia Dukakis, mm-hmm. um, um, and and that character is more of the 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 typical kind of that character, the very yeah very down to earth very pragmatic you know Italian New York mother, um, but here instead of that being a, a side character which. I guess it is also with Olympia mm-hmm. Dukakis. Cher plays that role as well. Um, she's not the typi- Yeah, she's not the typical getting swept off her feet, uh, falling in love character. Um, but that still happens to this down to earth, prag- pragmatic character, which brings a lot of depth to the character. Yeah, because it is a love story without the 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 typical arc of a love story. We don't have yeah. the the big misunderstanding or the big breakup or any of those parts in, in like the end of the second act, start of the third act that all oh, yeah, yeah. romantic comedy, romantic movies ever has. We don't even have that. The only um, antagonist, if you want to put it like that, or, or conflict is Loretta herself. And yeah, exactly. She's at the center of it. Um, and, and, and she's the one that kind of dictates it all Throughout throughout the story, and there's never any like outside forces like, oh no, I do love him, but I have to leave him. It's no, no. no. they just sit down and talk about how they're gonna deal with this <laughs> because they're pretty set. Even in the beginning, I mean, even though she says, oh no, I made a terrible mistake when she wakes up in in um, Ronnie's Nicholas Cage's bed, she's like, uh, we can't do this, and he's like, no, of course we have to, and she's like, yeah, okay, <laughs> but what are we gonna tell Johnny? <laughs> Um, and yeah, that was it. Was that was fun? And that was that was also what was uh, yeah. I said it fun about it. The the because it's not like a it's not like a physical comedy or anything. The comedy is purely um, uh, the dialogue, and the dialogue is great. Yeah, it's it's not like jokey, but it is very witty and and quick witted. I'd say it's a very um, Nordic comedy. Uh, if we talk about Nordic movies, good Nordic movies, that is. Okay. Uh, this uh, very down to earth, and there, there's no actual jokes. It's more just uh, situations where a lot of people know things about other people, and that makes a awkward or a weird situation, and that's where the comedy comes from. Yeah, uh, yeah, and, and, and that's it, 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 very down to earth sort of humor. And it, and it feels very realistic somehow. Yeah. Because peop, people aren't, like, throwing away quips. There's no there's no Chandler Bing from Friends. No, Everyone exactly. just talks like regular people. Um, so I, I, re, I really enjoyed that. Um, and then, and then yeah, speaking spe, speaking of dialogue, that was that was at one point where my, my, um, my expectations were, were um, 
Uh, they, they kind of went, went up a little bit because when I uh, when I started watching it and it said written by John Patrick Shanley, I was like, I know that name. Where do I know that name from? And I looked him up, and he wrote one of the best written movies ever called Doubt. I don't know if you've seen it. Oh. The movie about the nuns in, in the 60s. No, no, I haven't seen that one. With, uh, I think it's Meryl Streep and... Um, what's her name? Damn it. Uh, she plays Lois Lane in the new Batman Superman movies. Um, uh, oh, God, what's oh, her name? Uh, Amy, Amy... Amy... Fuck. Amy... Red hair. Amy yeah, I don't something. Who it is, but Amy... <laughs> Amy Adams. Amy Adams. Yeah, right. Yes. Amy Adams. <laughs> yeah. Um. That, that, uh, if you haven't watched that movie, uh, please watch it. It is. It has one of the greatest endings of all time. Is all I'm going to say. Um. But also, the rest of the movie is very good as well. Um. So check that one out. And it's based on a a um a play that John Patrick Shanley uh did. And I I never looked him up, even though I liked that movie so much. I never looked him up. Uh, oh, maybe he's like just a playwright, and this was his. One movie, but no, he wrote he wrote Moonstruck as well, <laughs> oh, and okay. some other stuff. And he also re- uh, wrote one of my favorite uh, Tom uh, no, uh, what is this person? Tom Hanks movies. Oh, uh, Joe versus the volcano. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 He's, oh. he's written some. I'm not. I haven't watched a lot of his stuff, but he's he's written some good stuff. Oh, and, um, and alive. Oh. Yeah. He wrote. Yeah. Alive. Yeah. He's, um, some good movies. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but you you found that out uh, before we watched the movie, or no, no, no. I, I guess I didn't. I didn't look it up at all. What, uh, what, I just what, I just started watching it. It was just in the credits. It said, oh, right. written yeah. by John Patrick Shanley. I was like, ooh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. So my my expectations were a little higher then, but yeah, they were they were still met. Mm. They were still met. Um, because yeah, I I thoroughly enjoyed it. Like I said, um. And, uh, yeah, what I was going to say is, um, when Nicolas Cage's character is introduced, that is not when it goes bad. It is after they have sex and uh-huh. when they decide to meet up later that night to go to the, to the opera. Yeah. That's where the movie kind of starts oh. to slow down a little bit. Okay. Yeah, for me, it was when, it- when he was introduced, like, straight up, <laughs> sort of. Okay. Uh-huh. Now, I thought his introduction was amazing. This I, character is so because all the other characters are kind of not like like meek, but they're kind of like soft, basically. Uh, not not in a bad way, but they're like kind of mild mannered. Yeah. Um But he is so intense. Yeah, but I um, mean, come on! In that in that introduction scene, uh, introduction scene, he's he's over the top intense. He's Nicolas Cage intense, and I I started laughing when he was going on I, his speed because. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> I I I don't know. I mean, his his character definitely feels like the most like fantastical. I mean, he he lost his hand in a freak uh, bread cutter accident. Yeah, I'm a, come um, on! And, and lo- lost love of his life, and now he's been living this life of destitution uh, for five years. Yeah, that that give me the big knife. I'm gonna cut my throat. Yeah, I'm gonna and cut I my want throat. You, I want you to see it. I never want to talk to my brother again. He ruined my life. I thought that was, <laughs> that was that was a lot of fun. Yeah, um, it was it was really fun, but I couldn't take it seriously. I, Not even a second. It was, no, but I mean, that, I guess that's that's where the comedy came. I think it. I think for me, it worked. It didn't feel um, like oh no, this is ruining the movie. I thought it really worked, and I, I it it worked in a way that it didn't feel like. Um, let's just talk about that right away. He didn't feel Johnny. No, say it again. I don't want to call him Johnny Depp for Nicholas Cagey. <laughs> he never did the rage cage thing. It was some other, some other kind of uh, restrained, uh, over the top acting, except for except for one one single scene, um, and that's uh, when they're later up in his apartment because uh, she wants to. Well, I want because he says I want to kill myself. She's no, no, I got, I'm, I got to talk to you. Hmm. C- cooks a mistake and they start talking. Um. And you know, she, she, he calls her a bride with a head. She calls him a, a wolf with a foot. And because of what they've been talking about. Mm. So he just stands up, flips the, the little table he has yeah. in his kitchen, grabs her, and, and, and they, they, they start, they start kissing. And she's like, wait, wait a minute. What are you doing? Like, oh, I'm kissing you. And then he grab, he, 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 he picks her up. So 
and and without without like anything, he just picks her up and screams, "Son of a bitch!" <laughs> that was that was pure uh, Nicolas Cage. But other than that, I thought he was uh, he was reined in by the director very well. <laughs> I got, I gotta say I, I disagree. I, I <gasps> no, I because I, he his whole introduction and yeah, both the scene in the in the in the bakery and then later on in the, in the apartment. I, I see that yeah. that's sort of the same scene, even even if they sh- oh, change location. Yeah, um, that is kind of yeah. Yeah, those that together. That's no, it was too much. It was oh, okay. I, I think it was it this. was too much. Nicolas Cage. Yes, it was extremely funny, and I enjoyed watching it. But it felt out of place. Uh, in that we to that point, we've had a very low energy shill drama movie and then this yeah. explosion comes from nowhere with this sort of super tragic uh joke D D character character backstory <laughs> where it's just oh i remember back it was five years ago my brother came in to buy bread and it's just oh come on it was, it was so nicholas cage and when you just slapped around things on the counter with his wooden hand because ah, i lost my hand it's just it was just too much too soon and then we just stopped and then he just became a normal character after that point because he never yeah. did anything like that ever again then he was just a a, a normal character that's the others yeah. yeah he was a little more intense but he wasn't oh yes <laughs> crazy again uh just, no no i i think that scene, it didn't ruin anything, but it, it needed to be toned down quite a bit to work in the movie, I'd say. it's uh, It was too much too soon, too over the top. <laughs> Couldn't take it seriously at all. And that's the that's the scene where we are supposed to see how, how Loretta and Ronnie has this great chemistry and this big fire. But no, this is this fucking crazy guy screaming and then this pragmatic woman saying... Well, I understand you're frustrated, and 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 we and we should be. Oh yeah, that's that's a good chemistry right there. Uh, no, no, I I disagree. But I uh I, I I think that's I think that's part of the um um the the subtext of the movie because the movie is about uh love in different stages. That's that's quite clear at least for me it was that it's uh yeah. it's not just a love story between these two characters it is about love um, yeah and we have we have a love story of well loretta, loretta has sort of two love stories of love convenient love and uh, passionate yeah. love yeah and then we have the exactly and then we have the um john mahoney uh in in the restaurant oh uh, yes who just <laughs> dates dates young women because he, he he likes the the, the the sort of the small fire or the small I know I know exactly what it says, but the spark sort of. Yeah. Even though in this, he's, no, he no, he's doomed, but he's fa- having fun while it lasts. Sort yeah, of. he's ha- he's having fun until it falls apart. Yeah, and then yes. and then we have these. Uh, I think we have a few stories of different kind of old love where. Yeah, you have uh, Ch- uh, Loretta's uh, mom and dad, and then we where, have the, um, Loretta's mom's sister. brother. No, brother. Yeah, brother. It is. Yeah. We have that also, so so we have a yeah. lot of different love stories. So yeah, that's yeah, and that's they're true. they're all looking at, at love from a from a different angle from, or from a different perspective. So Loretta's dad is is uh, cheating on her mom because he feels that a you know a, a, a stagnating marriage is is basically tantamount to death. And he and he talk everyone everyone especially him talks a lot about death because there's a lot, a lot of old people. I mean, I think Loretta. Of the main characters is the youngest character. No, that's probably Ronnie. Yeah, Ronnie. Um, but the I mean, they're they're all in their like mid to late thirties, and the, even the younger people are. So so the older characters are all talking about death. So he's 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 afraid that you know if he stays with uh, Loretta's mom, he's gonna die. And she she's she's still um, she's still in love with him. But I mean, it's it's a marriage that's been going on for like what forty years. So. You know, it's it's not going to be as passionate as it was in the beginning, but she still loves him. Mm. Um, uh, and then and then you have yeah the very pragmatic love story between Johnny and Loretta, where like I mean, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> we've been going out for a while, and we better get married before we get too old, basically, um, because I I I already was married once, but that ended in tragedy, so I better I, I better you know, 
pick the next best guy, basically. And then having, you know, meeting this this other super passionate person and f- falling madly in love with them. Um, then that that being Nicolas Cage's character. And, and not being able to decide which is which is because that's probably honestly that's probably a a marriage that will end because just like with her parents the the passion will not always be there. Mm. Um, so it's, uh, that's kind of a um what do you call it like, like looking that that's like kind of looking like looking into the future of a marriage like that. But then also like sh- sh- should you really care or should you re- shouldn't you really just live for for the moment kind of like John Mahoney's character does. Yeah, uh, and then and then. Ronnie has this big speed about it, about this. Yeah. That the love isn't what we see in the movies. Love, I don't remember what it says, but it's sort of something in the in the in the line of love is passionate and then it dies, and you should just yeah. grab a hold of it when you can. Um, yeah, exactly. It's not love isn't for forever. It shouldn't be, sort of. Yeah. But then you do have, um, just like in real life, you 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 do have the uh, the marriage uh, the marriage between. Um, uh, Loretta's mom's brother and his wife, who they're just you know they're they're two regular people, but they've been married for like thirty, forty years, and they're still they're still in love. There's nothing. There's not super passionate, or super fiery anymore. But every scene that they're in together, you know, they're they're smiling, they're happy, and they're in love. Yeah. And they're but you don't, you don't really think of that until like oh until until the end when they show up in the kitchen because everyone's in that kitchen in the end. Yeah. Um, and like, uh, and that's when I was like, oh, that, that makes sense. Like, th- that was just, you know, a, a, a regular kind of love, so to speak. I don't know what, I don't know how you would um, mm. label it, but you know, there yeah. was, their, their, their marriage probably didn't have a bunch of ups and downs. It would just, it just worked. Yeah. Fine. Cause the, that also happens sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And there, there was a lot of these small <clears throat> love moments or whatever in the movie. Uh, also with the, off price one thing and uh, the convenience store at the beginning of the movie with the, the old couple arguing oh yeah um, yeah 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 so so yeah yeah the movie is about love and different kinds of love and uh, how how it is represented and how we act on different sort of loves yeah and how it how it can like like you said how it's not at all like it is in the movies but how it also sometimes can be just like in the mm. movies um i i found that that was a very very mature way to look at the romantic comedy genre. I, I really enjoy that. Yeah, and I, I think that's the strongest point of this movie is is the that it's um <clears throat> it is about one love story, but we have so many other to to sort of compare it to, and, yeah. and all of them feel like real characters with real stories. Um, yeah, because usually in, in romantic comedies, we uh, at least well, I, I think. Most of the time, we have this, uh, which with with the main character has this friend couple who is the best the best couple in the world, and they oh you should go for it, you go and you know the trope that yeah. I'm talking about. We always have that to represent what they can have, but we don't see the sort of bad parts or the mundane parts of love usually. Yeah, it's 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 always. Um... It's always about falling in love, but then you know they it, it ends there where where mm. where the rest of life begins. That's when the movie ends. Kind of like, um, oh shit, what's it called? Is it the the Graduate with um Hoff- Hoffman? Yeah, yeah. Where where it ends with his big gesture where he stops. Uh, spoilers. He <laughs> stops the wedding of of the woman he's in love with. Yeah. Um, and they they run away together. Her in her in her wedding dress and him in whatever clothes. And they're they're sitting on the bus and like yeah, and that's where the movie ends. But the movie just continues for a few extra minutes yeah. where they're they're sitting in the back of the bus and like, was this the best choice really? What are we gonna do now? <laughs> that, that's, that's, when the the smiles slowly just fade away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like. Oof, oof. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, speaking of speaking of um, uh, the the typical romantic comedy, there is I saw one a few years ago with Simon Pegg. I don't remember what it's called, but it's just it's the most the most formulaic romantic comedy. It follows every like romantic comedy cliche to to the beat, literally. Mm. But I don't remember what it's called. I think it's let's see if. Yeah, oh, here it is. Man up, um, Man up. from 2015. Oh, it's not bad. I mean, of it. No, yeah, exactly. Um, 
But I mean, if if you like romantic comedies, you're gonna love it because it's just a regular romantic comedy. Oh. And, and and it has all those, all the um, yeah, all the all the stereotypes from romantic comedy the 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 meet cute, uh, the the falling mad in love, and then the the end of the second act they. They they leave each other because no this wasn't the right thing to do, and then there's the des the desperate um, uh, uh, like a- act gesture? of 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 passion yeah the gesture yeah. of passion and they 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 kiss in the end and everything's fine, and then the movie ends. It's uh it's yeah. it's not bad. I mean if you like Simon Pegg it's fine. Yeah I'm I, I don't know I, I'm kind of done with the, the that formula. I need I need I need something else like Moonstruck. Example. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, oh, me, me too. Like Moonstruck. Um, yeah. It was, it was, a, it was a breath of fresh air, even mm. though it's from 1987. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it, I, it's. I don't really know. You really feel that uh, the Oscars had a, a different way of judging movies back then than they have now, since this uh, won yeah. so many oh. awards. Um, yes. But I, I can. It, so, yeah. I no secret that I don't don't like the Oscars and I haven't done for years. Um, no, yeah. Me but I, I stand I by the. the at one point in time, they were a good uh, measuring point of what what is a good movie. Yes, uh, they aren't anymore, but they were once. And I, this movie is a good example of that. You can you can see why they chose this one. And yeah, you can see yeah you can see why they picked Olympia Dukakis and Cher because they are great. Yeah. Uh, um. Even even I I would even. Uh, I I would have <laughs> that's just me. I would have nominated uh, Nicholas Cage. I know oh, I don't know who no. be, gone up against. But I thought I thought he was great as well. Not not because of that specific scene. Because <laughs> rest of the movie, sure, but not that scene ruins it. <laughs> no no no. When when they're doing that and the nominees are and you see the little like thirty second clip, it's gonna be the one where he flips the table <laughs> yeah. and says, "Son of a bitch." <laughs> that's it. Oh yeah. It was just so good. Um, but no, yeah. but, and every everyone was great in the movie. Um, uh, even even uh, even Danny Aiello, I- 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 who's mm-hmm. barely in the movie, uh, he was fine. He was great in the movie. Yeah, um, but I mean, he's I, always great. Well, yeah, he's he's always good. Yeah, or he was, I suppose. Um, yeah. Um, but I I also really liked uh, uh, Cher's dad. What's his name? Cosmo. Cosmo. Yeah. Which just made me think of Seinfeld again. Um, this movie, did it, um, hmm? no, but whatever, no, 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 I was thinking, I was wondering, like, wait, was there, there was some character in this movie that I recognized from Seinfeld, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna look okay. through it. <laughs> I mean, it is a New York movie, so there's, there's a lot of New York yeah. actors. Yeah, I, I did read that, uh, John Mahoney said that, well, according to him, at least, uh, this was the movie that made him get the a role for Fraser. Yeah, it, it. Yeah, people. People saw him as a as a, as, a, as an actor, basically. That's a good actor. Yeah. So he was cast in in TV roles. Yeah. So so we have a, a that's one sitcom character at least. Mo- most yeah, most famously as what is it, Fraser's dad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, mm. But other than that, I think Nicholas Cage did a good job in the movie. Other than that, that specific oh, yeah. scene, he. he... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what I was gonna, yeah, but I mean that 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 whole scene is supposed to represent the the fiery passion of 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 falling head over heels in love, mm. and I mean, it, but no you, though, you, you, but no, I I know I know, not when he's in the bakery. That's not falling in love. That's just no, that's look at true, me, I'm tragic. Boo hoo. That no, but that's that's him being the the classic uh, romantic character from like. From like theater or even like early like Greek theater, because then romantic and comedic was actually just sad. <laughs> yeah, and that could work if it wasn't in this movie. No, but I, I think it did. I guess I I just I just en- enjoyed him being that way. Uh, well, it was mo- much more uh, convincing in the in the later scenes when he was just so um, um, he sort of wouldn't give up, but it wasn't ever creepy. No, sure. Uh, yeah, he's, he's almost like he's almost like smitten. He's like yeah. dreamy eyed all the and, time. And, and yeah. Especially at the end when he he just appears at their uh, <clears throat> at the uh, Loretta's parents' house, well, yeah. where she lives <laughs> too, I guess. Uh, yeah. And he he just I I'm gonna come in here and eat breakfast. Loretta, no, stop, no. Ugh. I'm gonna tell them everything. Yes, don't don't do it. And, and that scene is great. 
uh, at the end, where ev- oh, yeah. sort of every character in the movie just get into the kitchen, and everyone sort of knows something about each other, but they can't really say, because uh, Loretta, yeah. L- Loretta <laughs> knows about her father cheating, and then uh, Johnny comes in and doesn't know about Ronnie, but the father know about Ronnie, and it's just this. Yeah, and and uh, Loretta's grandpa or grandfather knows about her and Ronnie because um, they meet they meet uh, on the street and uh, when he's walking because he he walks his dogs all the time. Oh no, no, not Ronnie. That's uh, mm-hmm. Rose, uh, Loretta's uh, mother, and. Uh, John Mahoney. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and he knows about that, but they sort of, sort of drop that. Yeah, because that, that that's never that never becomes an affair. It's just them talking about. Yeah. Uh, they just meet up once, really, and talk about talk about love. Yeah. And how they how they view love from yeah from different perspectives, mm. and that gives both of them a new perspective to look at it, which helps in their f- future relations. Basically. Yeah, I, I think that's unfortunate that that <clears throat> scene where they were walking home. Or that, or a restaurant scene that that came mm. so late in the movie. I would have want that to be a bigger part of the movie because I really like that moment with those two characters. Um, yeah, he's he's almost like uh, um, not not really, but he's almost like this character who appears at specific moments in the story um, to, to kind of make a point. Almost like a like a like a god character, kind of like a Deus Ex Machina, but not really. Mm, yeah, yeah. I, I see if, what you mean. If you wanted to, you could you could turn it into that character, but he's not really. Mm. I I was almost expecting like when they all they all they're all um, uh, drinking champagne in the end after, yeah. Ronnie um, he, um, asks for for uh, Loretta's hand in marriage, and they're all they're all drinking champagne in the kitchen. I. Almost thought they were gonna, because the camera pans out of the kitchen and goes through the the apartment, yeah. and I, I thought they were actually gonna go out onto the street and you see John Mahoney walk past. <laughs> I was like, aha! Because he could have been that character, but uh, they don't yeah. because that would have been too too fantasy, too fairy tale like. <laughs> yeah, and I, but it could that could have worked in a lesser <laughs> romantic comedy, definitely. <laughs> uh, but I, instead, they they zoom in on family photos, which I thought was a perfect ending as well. Yeah, uh, there was. I had to Google that afterwards because there were a lot of small things, small details in the movie that I didn't really understand. Uh, one of those was the the sugar in the champagne. Yeah, I did not get that. Uh, that must be a traditional yeah, thing. So that, that sounds disgusting. Apparently, this movie is very, very heavily on uh, Italian American culture. Oh, uh, sure, yeah. Uh, but th- so they are. There are a lot of details that is about that that only sort of people who know about that culture will understand. Uh, okay. So apparently sugar in champagne, I, I'm, this is what I googled, so I, I could be mm-hmm. wrong. But uh, what I understood, it's it's an old, old wife's tale uh, from Italy that um, the Catholic side, where the yeah. devil, if, if you are truly happy, the devil will, will have it in, sort of. And mm-hmm. champagne is so good, it makes you truly happy. So you put sugar in it to make it slightly less good. Oh, yeah. Cause, yeah. <laughs> so the devil doesn't have any. That's what what I understood. At least. <laughs> and there's a lot so, of small... <laughs> that's, that is very Catholic. Don't be too happy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's why they they put sugar in everything. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. And there's all... It looks disgusting. <laughs> yeah. I, I would, I would, I, I'm going to try it, but I'm not going to like it. Uh, yeah. But uh, there's a lot of small things that everyone has nicknames for each other too. That's also an Italian thing. And there was uh, at one point that uh, Rose, uh, Olympia Dukakis' character, uh, mm. pinched Cher uh, or Loretta's arm, and that's sort of yeah. a, sort of a thing that parents do when you have been bad, sort of. Because oh, okay. that's yeah, at the yeah. end <laughs> where Ronnie appears at the house. Uh, Rose oh, okay. just goes goes up to Loretta, just pinches her, then goes past, and that's yeah. also apparent. So there's a lot of small things like that, which is pretty interesting, and I like it. Yeah, and you see uh, Vincent Gardini, who plays Cosmo, the dad. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he does the uh, uh, the the original devil horns against uh, Loretta to to ward off any bad spirits. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When it, when, it, when she when she talks about uh, marrying uh, Johnny, that's another Italian thing. I learned that from uh, Dio. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but and that's a, that's the thing that, that lends so much authenticity to a movie like this that there are all these little details that if you don't know about them, you know they're just 
pass you by and you barely notice them. And it's like, why, why are they putting mm-hmm. sugar cubes in the champagne for? Oh, whatever. It's a thing. But if you know about it, it just makes it like, ah, yes, it's just like in my house, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it really, it really lends into this realness. And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, that, that's one of the worst things in, in movies. Not like this, but movies generally. Uh, where you can see, like movies about, I don't know, our old culture, like Scan- mm-hmm. Scandinavian things. And you can yeah. see that they didn't really do the research properly, where they do yeah. small <laughs> things and you oh, that will, we, we don't really do that, sort of. Um. Oh, uh, I, my, 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 uh, my go to then is uh, Misomar. Have you seen, have you seen that? I, I actually haven't seen it. I will oh, see okay. it, but I haven't. You can, you can spoil the details if, if, if you want. Yeah, no, no, I'm not, it's not, not, not even like a story thing really. It's, oh, okay, a, yeah. it's a great movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's one of the better horror movies of later years. Um, but it's, it's, it's supposed to be based on like, um, uh, like Nor- Nordic myth, not Nordic, but Nordic traditions. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's why it's called Misomar. Um, but there's a bunch of like, so there's a bunch of like old Viking traditions mixed with early Christian traditions, which just oh. made it super weird because they were clashing back then. So I didn't understand why they were doing some Christian stuff and some Viking stuff. I mean, it's not supposed to be super realistic, but it, just, it felt super weird. And especially since the director talked so much about how much research he did and he had mm. like a, a 200 page, uh, like a, a style Bible for everything and all the, the ceremonies and things. I was like, but that's wrong. That's wrong. What are you doing here? <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's exactly, movie, so. that is exactly what I mean. That yeah. it's, it, it can ruin a movie if you don't have those details, but it can sort of make a movie to have those details and yeah. put in the effort. And I think this yeah. Moonstruck really did put in the effort. Oh, yes. Yes. And just with me so much, it, it works perfectly in spite of those little mishaps. Mm. Because it's great. Anyway, um, yeah, then it, was, it also felt. It also felt. Um, I'm I'm not from New York, but it felt very New York as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if if you, if you look. There's some movies that are like made or takes place in New York that kind of they feel like a movie, whatever. Oh, it's take it take place in New York, but then there are some movies that feels very New York. It feels like authentically like a New York movie. Um, a good example would be, um, uh, what's it called? As Good As It Gets with uh, Nicholas K. No. <laughs> with uh, Jack Nicholson. Yes, yes. Uh, and Helen Hunt, you know the one, mm-hmm. where he, he plays an obsessive compulsive writer. Um, that movie feels very New York, while a movie like, um, uh, 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 um, uh, what's it called? M- um, Mr. Deeds? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, sure. movie. Uh, it, it takes place in New York, but it's not like a super New York-y movie. You no, know? and it, it, it's also this thing that uh, in Mr. Deeds, <laughs> to take that as an example. <laughs> uh, hey, just, check out the Adam, uh, Adam Sandler podcast on YouTube. Hey, okay. hey, we talk about Mr. Deeds, hey. <laughs> it's a crossover episode. Uh, yeah. yeah. But because uh, that movie really does the uh, obvious New York. The, the yes, New York for yes. people who only see New York in movies, where they are at Times Square and they do film the Chrysler Building and they all these things. While yeah. this one, Moonstruck, the, I I guess I haven't lived in New York, but I guess this is more how how New York looks for people who lives there in the, the yeah, small I, I w- small parts and the small uh, stores and people know each other and all these with this because you're in just a small part of the entire city. Oh yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah. The, the, you said everyone knows each other. It's very familial. Everyone knows everyone, and you don't need. There's no. There's no like they don't film on Broadway or film in like the Chrysler Building or anything. The only thing that really makes it look like it's in New York, other than how people act, I suppose, it's that they they show the World Trade Center because it's it's perfect with the moon next to it. So mm. You, you kind of have to. It was a defining part of the New York skyline. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I've only been in New York once. Um, but and, and, and but then we we did all the the touristy stuff. We 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 walked through through uh, whatever it's called uh, Central Park, and we walked next to Madison Square Garden and went into the all the the, the skyscrapers and everything. But then we also because we were there for like two and a half weeks or something, we also checked out um, you know the less sightsee things, and 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 um, it, it, it 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 reminded me of that when we because we lived in in Little Italy, so it. it it was very similar to how it looked um, when they're walking around in this movie. Hmm. 
So yeah, it, it felt very, very New Yorky. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I've only been in New York for like three days, and I did all the touristy things. So I, I, oh, I okay. can't. I don't know. I, I'm just going for what I, what I've heard. And... Sure. Yeah, and like I said, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not claiming to be an expert. It was just, it, it reminded me of being in New York. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, so um, uh, another thing regarding Nicolas Cage in this movie, uh, yes. I don't know if you read that, but uh, that he, he the studio didn't want him in this movie? Uh, yeah, <laughs> kind of similar to uh, to Peggy Sue Got Married. They were like, nah, not him. Yeah. And then it was Cher, right, who said, like, yeah. you better pick him or else I'm not doing the movie. Yeah, she said she'll, she'll, yeah, she'll Which quit. Was, and, and the that was like a... It was a similar thing in Peggy Sue Got Married, or was it that he like nagged them until they picked him? Or yeah, I don't remember in that one. I think he, I think it was. No, no, no. That was that was uh, regarding his voice. Oh right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, right, right, and he right. nagged them until they relented to let him use the stupid voice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, apparently the reason she was so insistent that Cage would be in this movie <clears> was that <throat> she didn't think anyone else could be as crazy play as crazy <laughs> as he yeah. and I mean yeah. she, I can see that not wrong yeah exactly. <laughs> um, um, but that that's an interesting thing that, that pops up that like directors and producer are like nah we shouldn't really pick him he's not right for the part but then he still ends up in the movie <laughs> and uh, becomes maybe not in this month but you know he becomes one of the more memorable parts of the movie he's in it's uh, yeah. it feels like that that that's like part of part of what makes him uh, such a such a such a legendary actor. There's there's something there. We've mentioned that before. There's something there, even when he like overacts or when he doesn't really fit the movie. There's something there, just like yeah, well we we need him here. It couldn't have been done with anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, again, I I. Even though I think he should have toned it down a bit, I can't see anyone else in this movie, in this role. No, yeah, me neither. Uh, again, no, one, no one could have done <laughs> Another trivia part about Nicolas Cage, um, about how... Because he... We've said that in the pre- previous episodes, well, a few of them at least, that he usually <laughs> has uh, an inspiration to the way he he plays. Mm-hmm. Uh, so in, yeah. in Peggy Sue Got Married, he he took his inspiration from some f- uh, 50s or 40s uh sitcom character I think it was that's where yeah. he got the voice in this one he he actually took his inspiration from the German expressionist film Metropolis oh really? yeah okay, I, I didn't see that in there but <laughs> the, the, uh, the I think it's the main actor Rudolf Klein Rog I think so yeah uh, uh, yeah that's that's the person he was uh, m- sort of mimicking body language and uh and it will acting. Okay. And I <laughs> I can see that because he is very animated and very... Uh, yeah, I'm just going to stay with animated. Yeah, because, animated. Yeah, almost... Yeah. Uh, to, to, to kind of fits with the movie. Yeah, almost operatic because that movie is so... It's so bombastic. Mm, yes. Yeah. Uh, but I've never... I never really thought of how the main like actor in that movie... Acts. I always think of the scenery and the robot and oh yeah, yeah. I, I mean Metropolis. Yeah. All, all the big set pieces. <laughs> you don't look at drop. You don't watch Metropolis for the for the acting. Uh, no, no, no. But I guess I guess I guess that makes sense. I have now yeah. to rewatch it. <laughs> yeah. uh, it is a good movie. Weird, but oh good. yes, very good movie. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I, that's the the interesting trivia I have for this movie. Have you found anything else interesting you want to regarding no, behind the I, scenes? I, I I started I started because I I saw the movie this morning, mm. um, and then after I I, uh, I I quit I quit my job I almost said I, after my work day ended, <laughs> <laughs> um, I was like I have I have enough time to watch it again I can watch it with the commentary track, um, so I started watching it with the commentary track but I mean it was I mean they were they were giving some interesting tidbits but it was just like it was a it was a a blend of me being tired and them kind of talking in a sleepy with a very sleepy voice I just started falling asleep so I didn't I didn't finish the commentary track no. um, but they, what I, from what I heard it was nothing there was nothing super interesting that it wasn't already in like the IMDB trivia so I didn't really find anything no. uh, th- yeah, well, other than one, one small thing it doesn't really have anything to do with the movie but I, I thought it was kind of interesting uh, the uh, 
the old or the old man. I think he's credited as the old man. Really? In the movie. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, he's an he has been acting for a long time. <clears throat> Do you know when he's his first movie? No, but I, I recognized his face. Nineteen twenty six. He's he was huh? in, in like black and white German movies. <laughs> I, I think that's pretty interesting. Uh, n- yeah, because that's what he, he's he's the grandfather, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because uh, I, I I haven't seen any of those old movies, but uh, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking through now. I haven't. I don't. I don't really. I don't think I've seen any of them. No. Now that I, now that I look at it, but I, I recognize his face. Maybe it was just I, having seen part of this before. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, or he, he's been in other movies. Or it is possible that I mean, we both sort of studied film in a way. Uh, and I yeah. we would probably seen some scenes of, as examples or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's that. I thought that was interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um. Oh wait, he's in the name of the rose. Uh, yes, I saw that in in film class. Oh well. Yeah. Well, that's, what that's I said. where it is. That's Thank what I said. You. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Let's see. He's in something called Paganini. I wonder if I've seen that movie. <laughs> no, I haven't. Uh, I know of Paganini, the, the opera, but I haven't seen mm. this movie. It's directed and written by Klaus Kinski. Well, now I have to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, Moonstruck, yes. Um, yeah, I, th- I think we can start wrapping up here, because I don't really have much more to say about it. No, it's, um, it's, it's one of those movies where it just it's, doesn't have that... It's just a good movie. Just go watch it's, yeah, it. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a really good movie. Um, which was yeah, oh, well, just to 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 um, uh, call back a little bit to uh, crit- criticizing the the Oscars or the Academy Awards, because mm. uh, back in the day, that was the criteria for why movies won. If it was a really well made movie. Nowadays, at least the last like ten years, it feels like it's the movies that are the most like politically or socially conscious are yeah. the best movies. Yeah, it, it's, it's just like. But it's it's supposed to be entertainment. Yeah, that's sure. That's... You can have you can have politics and all the social awareness you want, but in the end, it's just entertainment, right? Yeah, that's what what happened with Oscar. I don't know when it happened or why. Uh, I remember, I remember when I realized it and stopped watching. But it, it like a, an an extra criterion to the to every movie was that it has to say something. It has to yeah. make you think about something or tell a story about something you didn't know. Uh, it couldn't just be good anymore. Yeah. Um, I, th- I think yeah, was... I mean, hmm? in 2010, or I guess 2011, um, Inception was nominated because it's a really tense, entertaining movie. It doesn't say anything about our world today or politics. No. Or whatever. It's just it's just super well-made and entertaining. Yeah, and that's um, sort of what should be. But also, if you, if you really want to go deep into the Oscars and the, the hypocrisy yeah, of Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. Do you know why it started? Uh, no. It's because the... I don't remember if it was the actors or the directors, but one of them. Or maybe both. I don't know. A lot of important people in the film industry... This is like in the 30s or something. 40s yeah. maybe. They went on strike because they thought they, they had too low pay. And they then the film industry decided, well, let's put on a grand show where we just <laughs> point at you and say you're good at your job, and they were okay with that. Uh-huh. <laughs> so that's that's all it is. It's just because actors and directors, or I don't know, uh, didn't feel that they had enough cred cred for their work and want more pay, and then they said, well, we can't pay you more, but you can have more cred for your work. And that's that's <laughs> all it is. So I mean. <laughs> Okay. Well, yeah. Well, well, I mean, I mean, if if you if you if you look at it, I guess I guess most award shows is that it's just look at me how good I am, basically. But yeah. the, the Oscars is the is the worst one. Yeah. There but, the, there are there the feel more there are other the feels more legit. Yeah, and I I think it's fine where it's just we want to to rise these people when. But when the reason you want to rise this them is because you don't want to pay them, I mean that's <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Pro- that's problematic. Or well, problematic sure, is proper. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, so, so well, no, it is kind of problematic. Yeah, but I mean, we're not going to pay you. We're just going to say, "Oh, you're so good. You're so good." Yes, yeah. here, here, you get a fake gold statue. Here you go. Yeah. Now shut up about your money. Exactly. And so, I mean, <laughs> the Oscars has never really been good. It's just at no. one point in time they shows good movies. Yeah, now it was a celebration don't. of movies. Yeah, yeah, now it's just I, I think who's the, the most woke? I think the last one. Wait, did that win? The last uh, time they actually did that, wasn't that like the artist? Um, might be. That yeah, actually, I, I don't remember. That actually, because I'd stopped uh, watching at that point, so I don't, I yeah. don't remember. But yeah, that was like, I, I remember 2012 Argo won. It was like the last mm. time I thought the right movie won. Yeah, but Argo was also one of those. Movie. Argo's also one of those. Uh, tell something that you didn't know. Oh, sure, sure. But it, things. But it was, but it was also. At least from the ones I had seen that year, it was it was the one that deserved the Oscar the most because it yeah. was the best made movie out of the the nominees. Yeah, I guess. I mean, a, a, a movie can say something important about life or whatever, but and also be entertaining. But like we had um, the winner this year was Nomadland, which is uh, it's a, it's a, it's an important story to tell about uh, housing the housing crisis and the kind of the, the new uh, Western front of America. But it's a terribly made movie. Yes, I it's saw your terrible. video about it. Yeah, it's a terrible movie. Good story, but terrible movie. It should not have won at all. But because it was an important movie, it won. So, yeah. It is interesting that we're actually talking about the Oscars, even though it sounds like a big sidetrack. Well, it sort of is. So this is yeah. the first movie Nicolas Cage was in where uh, there was an Oscar nomination, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, and the first Oscar win. Not to him, but the first movie. And this yeah. season of Nicolas Cage is called The Road to the Oscars, so... Yeah, we haven't really said that, but we have it kind of... Um, um, uh, what's it called? We've, we've, we've put it put the, the, entire, the entire run of movies into different seasons. Yeah. yeah. Season one is Road to the Oscars. So you can guess where the season one ends. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... so. Um, and so this is the the first the first taste that he got of the Oscars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's 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 why his next move was to make one of the strangest movies ever made. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So next week. Well, yes. no. Wait. First, before we go to that. What's, oh, sure. What's yes. your score of this movie? Oh. Um. Uh, you said at the beginning while... it, that it started out as a ten out of ten, but then it oh, stopped yeah. being ten out of ten. It was a 10 out of 10, but then it fell off a little bit. I'm hesitant to give it a 9, but I kind of want to. I mean, you're um, allowed to. Yeah, I know, but I, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking like the Oscars. I'm like, oh, this is just a romantic comedy. It can't be a 9. But you know what? I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'll, I'm going to give it a 9. Yeah. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to give it an 8, actually. Um, yeah. I, I was going to land on an 8, but fuck it. Right. I'm going to give it a yeah. 9. Because uh, I... I don't think I'm gonna rewatch this movie. I I I I liked it. I had a lot of fun, but I don't think I. I want to go back and watch it again. So, I I probably will yeah. for for the for the performances alone, and uh, and of course, son of a bitch. <laughs> I can watch that scene ten times in a row. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So next week. Uh, yes, the, next week. The the, the movie that. Uh, one of the movies that was the whole point of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, to get you to see Vampire's Kiss. Yeah. Yes. It is... Uh, we've been ta- we've almost been mentioning it in every episode <laughs> yeah. so far. But, but I it, keep it, saying, it, I don't, I don't want to hype it up too much, but... Because uh, <laughs> it is like one of your favorite things. Oh, yes. Movies. Oh, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. <laughs> of all time, like, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It's... it's uh, uh, yeah, like I said in my in my very old video at this point, it's a it's it's genius. It's a it's a hidden masterpiece, uh, an un- a forgotten gem, but not, not really forgotten. But well, um, uh, and I, uh, I I I hope I haven't ruined it for you <laughs> by saying that. Um, uh, well, I, I am some, excited. Some, some people say some some people still say it's just bad, but I say no, no, no. You're misunderstanding it. <laughs> it's genius. Uh, yeah, so I, I will. I will watch this movie, and I also will... Well, what do you think? Should I watch your video of it afterwards? Uh, sure. Why yeah. not? 
please. Yeah, cause I, I, <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to do that so so we're sort of on the same level. Uh Yeah, but definitely watch the movie first. Yeah, obviously. And yeah. then we we kind of were discussing off air, uh but I guess I'll just ask you now. D- did you want to do a commentary track for it as well? Um Yeah, you know what? I mean, Why not? Sure, yeah. Yeah, sure. Maybe we won't record it like at the same time or whatever, but just so we, we, we do it at some point mm-hmm. um, dur- during this time, so to speak. Uh, whenever whenever we have an extra two hours to spare. Yeah. Um, and then, to everyone listening, if you want to hear that uh, uh, commentary track, if it's out when you when you hear this or if it's going to come out in the future, once again, check us out on Patreon. You have, um, I guess, kind of a monthly uh, uh, commentary tracks with, with me and some guests. Sometimes it's my sister, sometimes it's Christopher, sometimes it's uh, some other friends. Uh, so check that out as well. But yeah, um, so this week, Moonstruck. Uh, great movie. Next week, Vampire's Kiss. I'm, I'm anticipating, I'm, I'm very, very, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of nervous <laughs> because I've right. been talking about it for every week since we started this, but uh, I, I think you're going to enjoy it. Either way, you know, it'll be fun to talk about. So uh, j- join us next week for our Vampire's Kiss discussion. And if you're if you're gonna watch the movie, please check out uh, my my um, uh, video essay or whatever you want to call it about the movie that I made a few years ago. It's on my channel. If you're watching this on YouTube, I will link it down below. But uh, other than that, thank you so much for uh, listening, and we'll see you in the next one. And until then, have a good one. Bye. Bye, everyone. The Nicolas Cage Podcast is part of Please Don't Make a Scene. It's produced, directed, and edited by Tobias Vidian. Hosted by Tobias Vidian and Christopher Billian after an original idea by Christopher Billian. Executive producer is Annika Vidian. And a big thank you to all our sponsors over at Patreon for keeping the show going. Laura Kinney, Rasmus Jonsson, Mob, and If you also want to join our Patreon, you can at www.patreon.com slash don't make a scene. Help us keep the show going.